Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Tandiwe Alita and I'm back again with another prophetic word that the Lord has given me to share with you. This one is based on a dream that I had on the 25th of June 2020. And as always, please remember to take this word before the Lord if you believe it's meant for you. Um, because not every word is meant for everyone and if you um, and this may actually be confirmation for you so that's even better but I still encourage you to take it to the Lord and let this be a, um, a catalyst for conversation with the Lord um, I always believe that uh, prophetic words are just another way of God giving you some things to pray about and to bring before him so I really encourage you to do that seek your answers from him and not from me or from anyone else um, this is a very very important uh, part of what the Lord is doing now and this time is getting us closer to him to hear from him to have better wisdom and discernment so that we may be able to move into everything that he has for us in this time I'm going to start off by reading Galatians 6 verse 9 and it reads as follows let us not become weary in doing good for the for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up that is the key here friends so through this dream the lord was showing me that this is a time for you to persevere you are currently in a place of uncertainty where it may feel like you're not you're not sure what's happening um there isn't much here for you right now there isn't much that you can run with that you can um, be excited about in the space that you're in but the Lord is saying that you need to persevere and just hold on a little longer because things are moving he's setting things in place for you um, he is still providing for you even in this place of uncertainty and um, and he's, he's making sure that the provisions are there for you even in this time. He's saying that this is a, a place that you have, it's a territory, it's a place that you've graduated from. So that's why you're feeling this um, uh, unrest or anxiety within you to just like move into something else to be able to get going with um with what the lord has called you to do but the lord is saying that there are certain things that need to be in place before you get there and while you're in this place press into time with him this is the key this is what is going to propel you this is what's going to get you to the next uh, because he has much that he wants to share with you. He has a lot of instruction to give you. He has a lot of wisdom to give you. And he wants you to be, to be prepared for what is ahead. So while you are feeling uncertain, spend more time with him. Because this is key. This will help you also um, get through this time seamlessly and quicker. Because you are occupying yourself with him you are allowing yourself to be in a space where he is um, imparting certain things to you so that is key spend time with him that is I can't stress that enough and I probably will say this in every video from now on spend time with him stop looking for your answers everywhere else except from him he is the one that is willing and will give you correct information about your destiny about your life so the Lord also showed me in this dream that um, you're not going to be here for much longer. Um, but he also wants to give you some, some stamina, some, some extra boost and some, something to be excited about, to look forward to. So he's going to be showing you certain things. And he's going to be giving you certain things in this time as you transition into uh, that big thing. He's going to... Um, bring your attention to things that you can acquire in this time, things that you can do in this time, things that may have cost others um, a lot more. Others had to pay a higher price for these things, but you are not going to have to pay as high a price. They're not going to cost you as much. You went through your time of... Um, being stripped and refined already you've already um, paid a lot you've sacrificed a lot you've lost a lot and so the Lord is saying that while you get to um, while he draws your attention to these things um, you are not going to have to lose out on much just to get them um, the picture that he gives me of this is you know when um, 
new stock arrives in a store, a department store, a clothing store, and a new stock arrives, obviously you're going to have to buy that new stock at full price because it's just fresh into the store. But if you wait a while, if you just give it a little while, you will be able to get those things on discount at a discounted rate on sale. And this, and the Lord is saying that that's what it looks like for you. Others, um, because of the timing, because they went ahead, they had to, they had a bigger price to pay. But because you've been patient, because you have allowed God to do his thing to have his way and you have trusted his timing he is rewarding you in this time with certain things that are not going to be a huge sacrifice or a huge cost to you so that is the good news while you are transitioning in this place of uncertainty in this place where there isn't much else for you he is still going to give you some things he's still going to draw your attention to some things that um, will not only in fact, they're not even for this place or where you are at the moment. They are for where you're going. You're going to need them and um, you are getting them at a at a discounted rate. So the Lord says that you are almost there. Refrain from moaning and groaning and complaining and whining about, oh, I've been in this place for so long. I can't see what the Lord is doing. That is a lack of faith and a lack of trust in the Lord. This is your chance to show the Lord that you do believe him, that you do trust him. Um, there was a scripture that I wanted to read. Let me see if I can find it. Um, in fact, I don't have to read the scripture. I know it's in Genesis chapter 29, I think. And it's um, around the story of Jacob and Rachel and Leah. So uh, Jacob obviously fell in love with Rachel and he worked seven years for her. And when that seven years was up, Jacob went to his uh, uncle and said, bruh, I'm done. I've done the work. Give me my wife so I can make love to her. Like literally NIV says that. I was so blown away. Let me just see. <laughs> I read this today. So uh, 29. So Jacob served seven years to get Rachel. But they seemed like only a few days to him because of his love for her. I love that. Don't let this time feel like forever that's why the lord is doing certain things he's bringing your attention to certain things he's going to give you certain things so that it feels like only a few moments in time and it doesn't feel like this prolonged wait right i really love that part of the scripture verse 21 then jacob said to uh, laban give me my wife my time is completed and i want to make love to her and then obviously laban went on to um you know, deceived Jacob and he gave him Leah instead. And um, when Jacob woke up that morning after he had spent the night with Leah, he went to, La to Laban and said, what's going on? You promised me Rachel, but yet I found Leah here. And um, Laban said, well, in, it's not our custom for the firstborn daughter not to be married or it's not our custom for the firstborn daughter to be married after the second one so she had to be married first that's why i gave her to you so you just need to complete this week of marital things whatever rituals or things that they had to do in that week and then i'll give you rachel but you will still have to work another seven years for her so jacob worked the did the things that he needed to do um, for the week with Leah and then Rachel was given to him but he still continued on to work for Laban for another seven years before he was free to you know do whatever he wanted so that story really resonated in my spirit um, with regards to this word because you know very often we we forget that there's that there are things that we need to do, that this life that we're living is not meant to be a smooth road. Jesus promised that we will have trials and that there will be things that get in our way. But the promises are true. That which he has promised you will come to pass. It's your attitude in the time. It's what you do in that time. And also remember that 
um, don't let your don't find yourself in a position where you're just waiting on God to do everything. Like he must just make it all happen. You there is a part that you need to play. Jacob had to go to Laban and say, "I've worked seven years. Give me my wife." Uh, Laban wasn't going to go to Jacob and say, oh, look, dude, I see you've worked seven years. Here's Rachel or first Mary, Leah, whatever. So Laban was not going to approach Jacob. There was no way that was going to happen. So Jacob had to take a stand. He had to say, uh, the time is up. So give me what belongs to me, what you promised me. So that is something that we also need to be uh, aware of is that a lot of us are just waiting for God to do stuff. Um, and we're praying and praying and praying. There is a time to pray and there's a time to act. And the only way that you'll know what time it is, is if you are spending quality time with the Lord. And I'm stressing the word quality because very often spending time with the Lord can look like us reading a nice devotional on the Bible app. Um, you know, one of those reading plans. And then we pray up a storm and ask and beg God for everything that he's promised us. And we might sing and worship and then we're done. And um, yeah, things must happen. But quality time is a is, is between two people. It should be a situation where you are having a conversation with the Lord, where he gets to speak, where he gets to guide, he gets to tell you things, because that is the most important part, is actually hearing what he's saying to you, because then what's the point if you're just going to read stuff, um, pray up a storm, and then off you go. It's very important that you also hear what he's saying, Give him the space to speak. And um, I know some of you may say, but you know, the Lord doesn't speak to me. I don't know how to hear from the Lord. Just get into a quiet space and let, and just be there. Just be there. Let him begin to speak. And you will learn to hear his voice by what you pick up in your spirit in terms of what he's saying and then he would confirm that later someone would give you a scripture you would see something you would hear something and it would all make sense to you so it's up to you it's really up to you no one can do that for you so that's the key thing as much as the lord is sovereign there's a part that we have to play we are not robots we aren't just here to sit and just let the lord do everything so just like jacob know the time when you can go and say okay i've i've done what i needed to do i'm ready where is my promise so that is the word friends i really pray that it blesses you um Take it to him. Pray about it. Hear what he's saying to you about it. Seek his counsel. And remember that he is a good father. He loves you. He's ready to bring you into all that he's promised you. Because you are so special to him. No matter who tries, I know I'm winning. I know this is.